you know, there was a time when you were allowed to acknowledge that U.S. policy could lead to this exact event. And now when you even suggest that us, you know, floating NATO membership with Ukraine and saying that they were going to be made apart, that some of these things were exacerbating and they crossed the red line and, you know, created a situation that was incredibly tense where this is the predictable outcome. Again, that's you're not allowed to talk about that. now. Well, it's it's also like to bring back the chest analogy is if you looked at war and you 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 ignored the human casualties and the horrors and the fact that it should absolutely be avoided at all costs and all human deaths are valuable and bombing apartment buildings and all the horrible shit. It's terrible and evil. But this isn't like that we are being fed a narrative that Russia made a big move and there was no other moves. Right. And when we find out about the moving of weapons closer to Russia, the discussion of them joining NATO, and you realize Russia is getting moved on. There's moves. Now, you, you, you absolutely be correct in saying the, the correct response is not blowing up apartment buildings and starting a war and invading a country. You're right. But this is not an unprovoked situation. It didn't and just we, come out of nowhere from yes. a madman. We're, we're yes. not getting this narrative on television. The, this is a new time. And the only way to get this discussion is you guys. It's people like you. And that's what's so fucking important about today. And that's what's so dangerous about censorship. And that's what's so dangerous about these partisan ideas where you're willing to, like, you're willing to absolutely ignore good points that the other side says because then you would give them some sort of credit in winning this ideological bullshit game we're all playing. That is so it well It drives said. me nuts, <laughs> especially on corruption. You know, you were talking about censorship, but corruption is a great one where everybody wants to talk about Hunter Biden on the right. I would love, listen, we can talk about Hunter Biden all day. We've been covering we it since day one. We have covered Hunter Biden extensively. One. He's a like, guy who got hooked on drugs. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and likes to get his duck, dick right. sucked. Yeah. You know, and who <laughs> doesn't? Lot. Right. What, that's not what the problem is. Yeah. You know, the, there's, the, it's, it's just revealing a very corrupt system that everyone wants to ignore exactly yeah. and then we, we were like him. hey let's talk about jared kushner and then a lot of yeah. people on the writers i'm like hey uh you know this guy it's actually great they're internal saudi documents where he asked the saudi uh, royal kingdom fund or whatever for a billion dollar investment in, in in his new fund private equity fund right after he leaves the white house the internal emails are like i don't think this guy's a very good investor i'm not sure this would be a good use of our capital and mbs the crown prince is like give him the money they're like it's they're like he send him the billion personally yeah. To Just get to Jared, give this guy his two billion, billion two, I think it was two, Maybe two billion, two billion right. for his fund. Yeah. That's and a baller both. friend to have. Yeah. yeah, but if you're on the right, eh, let's not talk about yeah, that. Right. Let's talk about Hunter Biden and his laptop, and of course the Democrats. We had um. Ted Lieu, congressman yes. on. That, yeah. This is back in the old days at the Hill at Rising, but I'll never forget. We were pressing him on Hunter Biden and these boards that he was on and the money he was getting. Whatever he's like, people sit on boards and they get paid money. Like, it was Jesus so part Christ. of the Washington, like, the water that they swim yeah. in. He couldn't even conceive that it was a problem. I mean, now, it may not be illegal, but that's an issue in and of itself. The fact that he could just hand wave away. Well, that it's semi-legal. The... Yes. Oh, no, it's just straight legal. Yeah. It, that's, but the, I mean, that's the crazy yeah. part. It's, I, it's sketchy. It's legal, but it's yeah. sketchy. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But to your point about, you know, censorship and the, like, total lack of willingness to challenge your own side's narrative, I, did you just see this uh, Columbia Journalism Review report that came out about Russiagate? Sagar and I were looking oh, at it. Oh, it's fantastic. It's really long in depth. I mean, it's overdue, right? It's, like, way after the fact. But I think this is one of the first certainly mainstream, and CJR is as mainstream as they come, mainstream attempts to actually go back through the Russiagate narrative where it started, how it was sold to the American people, and all of the lies and especially the omissions. And they take a really hard look at the New York Times as kind of the main player in the story. There were mm. other villains as well, but the New York Times was the main player. And they would report something that, you know, they would shade it to look as bad as possible with regards to Trump-Russia connections. They would get some other piece of information that was exculpatory, wouldn't be in the paper at all. And they got all kinds of, you know, millions of new subscribers to their paper who were there to hear this, like, you know, elaborate tale of Russian conspiracy and the Manchurian candidate and whatever. And the underlying narrative that at least I take away from the CJR report is the New York Times and MSNBC and a lot of other places. They were more interested in feeding that audience what they wanted to hear 
than actually looking at the facts of what was happening. And, you know, you read it, it is as damning as it could be. And listen, the way we were sold the Iraq war was bad enough. Like that was a a travesty. After the fact, they actually did some correctives that here's what we got wrong and we're sorry, whatever. This, they will never admit that they did anything wrong here. They just move forward and pretend like none of it ever happened. And it's it is astonishing. And they wonder then they turn around and wonder like why does no one trust us? We just yeah. don't get it. Yeah, well we have to make laws against disinformation. That's what we have to do. Oh. Misinformation <laughs> and malinformation. All of those are bad. And this way we can control the narrative. Are you gonna and- are you gonna be the one who determines <laughs> what's what's re- fact and what's fiction? And actually in the piece they were like the US has the lowest media trust in forty two developed nations. <laughs> and they're wow. like yeah, I don't how does think that that's happen? true because I yeah. think there's a, an insanely strong trust in independent media. You are right. I'm, I'm, they're, they're pointing Taibbi, to the mainstream media. You know, these, these people that are, they're just who they are. You know who they are. And it's possible to do now. You can be a real person. You don't have to be a propagandist or a spokesperson for the state. You can be a real person and tell people what the fuck is going on. Because this is a wild game that other people are playing on our behalf with money that they've gotten from our taxes where we don't even get a say in what the fuck they spend it on. It's crazy. It's crazy, and it, 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 it doesn't affect your daily life. You drive to the same place. You say hi to your neighbors. All of, it seems mm-hmm. fine, mm-hmm. but you're dealing with a fucking destructive empire that has been doing things to other countries that if you saw them, if you were boots on the ground, you would be horrified. If you watched a drone bomb a wedding party in Yemen, mm-hmm. if you were a part of something in another country that we're involved in, that our tax dollars have gone to, that we have just written off as being not of concern right right which is crazy Yemen is a great example I mean across the board humanitarian organizations around the world say this is the greatest humanitarian crisis that is unfolding in the entire world and you know we are highly complicit in this through our support of Saudi Arabia you don't see Yemen flags from people on people's cars. You don't see the news media talking about it. You don't see them humanizing the the children that are starving and dying there. And so, you know, part of part of the way that the information ecosystem is shaped is what they decide to care about, what they decide to cover, the way they decide to cover it, and what just gets pushed off the page entirely out of sight, out of mind. Mm-hmm.